lens blur inside of uh, ZBrush is now very easy with the BPR filters and it's just one of the new cool things that you can do. It also has a really interesting twist that I want to show you and this is all part of a new update that we've done at ZBrush Workshops where we explore BPR filters and how you can use them to go from a, uh, a simple skin setup like we have here which is using um, the light cap setup and the wax modifiers and then use that to get a best preview render that has more of a uh, sci-fi quality you know maybe some kind of uh, moonlight coming from the left and then computer lights blue screens coming from the front and kind of lighting up the face so uh, one thing you need to know about best preview renders is that they're not designed as a replacement for 2D comps. What they're designed to do is augment that entire process. And the way you want to think about this is as though this is a way to create a series of preset looks. So in this case now I have a, uh, I have a light cap, I have a material, I can bring any model into this scene right now. And they're all going to have this look this look of this kind of sci-fi uh, moonlight from the side, computer light uh, from the front. They're all going to have that look. So BPR filters and a lot of the new rendering stuff inside of ZBrush is really designed about creating several setups that you can bring models into and get these preset looks. And BPR filters does a fantastic job of that. So how do I go about creating a, a lens blur? That's the thing I want to share with you today. So I'm going to turn all my other filters off and I'm going to come into this this uh, F2 which is by default set up with blur. You can set any type that you want. I could come in here to blur and change this to anything I wanted but it's just easy to know that F2 is set up with blur. I'm going to return these to their normal setup and there we go. Now in terms of the blur effect radius is the most powerful because this is the amount of blur you're encountering. So let's set that back down to uh, 1 and then go slowly upwards to see the the amount of blur that we want. Now we're going to push this off to the edge but how much blur do we want? Let's leave that at about 5. That's a good amount of blur. Now how do we limit this to parts of the model that are farther away from us? That's where this depth slider comes in. Set that all the way to 1, and it's going to blur everything that is farther away from you. And then you set it to negative 1, it's going to blur everything that's closer to you. So what we want to do is set it to 1, and then you can adjust that. You can, say, go into the depth exponent, and let's say set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0. We've completely removed the depth masking by setting the exponent to 0. But let's go the opposite direction. Let's go from 1 to 2, to 3, all the way to 25, or all the way to 100. I think 25 is where it goes, yeah. So now we've, we've basically removed depth. We've removed the entire effect of blur because we've pushed it so far back that it doesn't have any effect. So you want to find the exponent that works for you. And 9 times out of 10, I'm going to leave that at at the default. You can also adjust it with the Fresnel setting. Come in here, set this to 5, or sorry, 0.5, and you start to push the effect towards the contours of the form, negative 0.5, and you start to do something different. So let's go 1, negative 1, and 0. Different ways to mask this. Strength is an opacity, Okay, and invert it and it actually becomes a sharpening filter. There is already a sharpen filter in there so you don't really need to invert a blur for that but it's one way that you can do it. So now in this case we have a very simple lens blur set up. Now I want to show you one more thing that I do and that I think is also a really cool uh, way to get a kind of blurring or uh, a depth effect and that is to come into F, uh, I think it's F6, yes. F6 is set up with fade and try increasing your strength okay and then apply a depth filter to that 
So by default, it's going to be at zero, which means the whole thing is going to just fade. But now, if you apply a depth mask, then you're only going to get those areas around, at the very edge of them, to blur, which is in and of itself a really, really cool effect. Now, I've changed my blend mode from the normal replace to a soft light, just because I thought that that kept some of the form, but also really focused or honed uh, all of my attention towards the center of the model. And then depth exponent was another way that I was able to really kind of hone in on uh, on the face. So for example, by default that's set to 1. That's a really strong effect. So at 3, I get more of the face, but the the surrounding areas fade as well. So combine that with a little bit of uh, blur, and you've got a really nice effect that really highlights the face and really focuses your attention there. So I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and remember this is all part of a new uh, module we've added to uh, ZBrush Workshops, and uh, we've now got a brand new $45 a month subscription, so come join us, check out what we're doing, and good luck with your sculpting.